Now, this opponent, Jeremiah Donovan, I know nothing about, except that he was from Brooklyn, New York. So maybe he knew Fisher because Fisher was from Brooklyn. But that's all that I know about him, other than his rating was 2175. Okay, so here we have d4. So, of course, we're going to have a king's Indian defense, starting with knight f6, the Indian game, c4, and g6, the king's Indian defense. Knight c3 and bishop g7 is your normal variation, e4 and d6. Now, you've seen me play this variation on quite a few occasions. Knight f3, castles, bishop e2 is the orthodox variation. Queen's knight to d7 and kingside castles. e5 is the positional defense. And it is Donovan who is first to depart from the encyclopedia with pawn to h3. The book move is bishop e3. I'll show you the line. Bishop e3, c6, d5, c5. Knight e1, knight e8, knight d3, and pawn f5. This knight will come here eventually. Although I have had occasion to just bring it back to f6 at times as well. So that is the book line, according to the Encyclopedia of Chess Openings. Donovan opting for pawn h3. Bobby going ahead with the usual c6. Bishop e3. Queen e7 here. And yes, e takes d4 makes sense to me. And if bishop takes the pawn, then, yeah, bishop takes the pawn, then knight d5. If you don't want to take the queen here. Queen takes is the wrong way to go because it allows a discovered attack on the queen. So, for example, I could play any move like even knight d5 where I'm being hit by two pawns or knight g4 where I'm being hit by a pawn because my attack is stronger than his. So for that reason, you'd want to take that with the bishop and then black would put his rook on the open or half open file. Let's go back. Bobby didn't uh, take the pawn. He played queen e7. Queen c2, d5 being the definitive move in this position. And so e takes should still be played. He played um, a6, gets a question mark. Yeah, same thing. It's just different than b6 here. Knight, knight takes can be played here, by the way, probably. Although now I'll play here more than likely and start focusing on the E-man. Okay, A6 was Bobby's choice. A4, and again, D5 is the usual type of move. In fact, D5 is often played the second you play E4, uh, E5. Now Rook E8. Did I mention that I like the idea of pawn takes pawn? <laughs> Rook e8, and the bot does too, apparently. Well, finally somebody breaks the tension, and it was um, Donovan. And Bobby took this with his pawn. I would have rather taken it with my knight, I think, and keep this open now. I get a star for this. But Bobby took with the pawn and gets a question mark. a5. Knight h5, king's rook to d1, knight f4, bishop f1. Knight f8, a very strange looking move. The bot calling for queen f6. Okay, I like the idea of moving the knight, but what about knight c5? Is that a move? It seems to me that it at least deserves to be considered. I mean, it's counted as inaccurate. So I've had a couple of brilliancies today and a couple of inaccuracies. Knight f8, quite strange. C5, uh-huh, knight a4. I would not have considered knight a4 there, but I get it. 
Okay, so he did play his knight to e6, eyeing the c5 square. And to me, queen f6 seemed more appropriate there. The bot calling for g5. What does queen f6 get? A check mark. So knight 8 to e6, knight a4 now, and knight g5. Knight takes knight, queen takes knight. Of course, that means that you can take this pawn because the G-man is now pinned by the queen. And so Donovan breaks that pin with king h2. And look at this hole here on b6, waiting for the knight to swoop in. Well, bishop e6 was played. Queen e7 preferred. Now that the pin is gone, just return your queen to a central position. g3 hits the knight, and bishop h6 ignores that hit. Hmm. Bishop f8 being called for. Why is he giving up the knight? Just to open. It's a clearance sacrifice. It's a decoy is what it is. He wants the pawn to come here so he can come here because that super attacks here. Now the bishop defends. Let's see how it unfolds. Donovan accepts that sacrifice. I'm not sure how wise that is. I might prefer to infiltrate and double my rooks on this open file. That gets a question mark. The bot agrees with rook d6. Well, pawn takes the pawn, hits the bishop. Bishop c1. Queen h4, as I predicted. But how is he going to deal with the bishop on f1? The bot calling for bishop g7. Well, you know, I, I would also be interested in rook d8 before bishop g7. And then maybe if, especially if he plays something like b4, bishop g7 becomes very desirable. All right, let's go back. Uh, queen h4 is played. Rook a3, now queen's rook to d8. Uh-huh. Interesting. Queen's rook to d3. Rook d6 is awfully appealing, isn't it? Well, Bobby trades rooks here. White has a slight advantage. Well, f5 looks interesting. He can't take without being skewered. Bobby played bishop g7. The bot still calling for the bishop to come to g4. What about f5? What's, it gives me a star. Looks very enticing. Of course he cannot take. He'd have to play e5, wouldn't he? Oh, no, apparently not. But he definitely cannot take. That's for sure. All right, well, bishop g7, b3, now f5. Rook f3 gets a question mark. The idea is to play bishop c4, isn't it? Pawn takes e4. That looks good. Not liked by the bot, though. Ah, march this pawn forward. Hmm. It's a really intriguing game. Mistakes in this game. There were none in the previous game. This is the last round. Both players will be fatigued. And you don't play perfect every time. Queen takes e4. And now bishop to c4 will be a winning move because this is a pin. So bishop c4 would not be able to be captured without that queen capturing the rook. For that reason, Bobby goes ahead and backs up his bishop, maintaining an obstruction on the a2 g8 diagonal and discovering an attack on the white queen. That attack is answered with queen c2. A good move, but okay, maybe not so good. Hmm. Well, yeah, better is queen b4, 
renewing the threat of bishop c4. If you try bishop d5 hitting the rook, I still play bishop c4. That pins your bishop to your king so you can't take my rook. Come back. You do want to avoid the trap of queen takes this pawn here. You might think, oh, I've got two, three attackers, and he only has one defender. But <laughs> bishop e5 wins the queen, ladles and jelly spoons. So don't fall for that old trick. Queen c2 was played, and rook e1. Look at that exclaim. That attacks the bishop. Safest move is bishop g2. That should maintain an equal position. But Donovan plays bishop c4. That gets a question mark. Look at the eval bar lunge in black's favor. This is the move that no doubt loses the game for Donovan. If he plays bishop g2, he is in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. You say, isn't that where this was played? Well, I just mean Oklahoma, okay. He's okay with bishop g2. Even though I can play bishop d5 here and get an exclam, rook takes the pawn, hits the queen. If you didn't like my one-liner about being Oklahoma, then let me say that white is Hakuna Matata. Anyway, bishop c4 is a major mistake. It allows queen g5, threatening checkmate right here. That gets an exclam. How does Donovan prevent the checkmate? Well, he tried bishop takes bishop check, but we don't take that bishop. We're not going to take that bishop because that will allow and equalization. Do not play king takes bishop. Look at the eval bar. Oh, and the point is now rook takes pawn check, and doesn't much matter how you get out of check. Let's say bishop f6. It gets an exclam. I'm going to take it. Force you to take. Oh, double exclam! I'm going to take that. Make you take with the queen, give you check here, and if queen e6, and I've got two minors on the rook, and that should be equal. And maybe, oh, next glad, maybe I'll give check here and just maybe go back and forth. But as you can see, this is equal. So we're not going to take the bishop. So king f8, what a great move is king f8. And the bot says king h8 is even better, but he's winning in either case, and there's no wrong way to win at chess. Either way, either way, what does white do about this checkmate threat? There's nothing he can do about it, except give away his rook. And then if you're going to give away your rook, you might as well resign, right? In fact, <laughs> thank you very much. Okay, so come back. Bobby played king f8. To me, it's the same thing. It's just different. He did play rook g3. Pawn takes check. Pawn takes pawn. And rather than rook takes bishop, Bobby played queen takes bishop. It's basically the same thing. It's just different. To me, rook takes bishop is a little bit better because you're hitting the queen with a rook but bobby the master of simplification forces a queen trade and now he's going into the end game the exchange up better than dealing with complications i suppose even if this is technically a better move but the point is after queen f2 you have to deal with some points of initiative on white's part so it makes perfect sense to force the queen trade. And that is forced because if you don't trade queens, I've got check. 
followed by checkmate. So the queen trade is forced, and we go to a rook bishop versus two minor endgame. Bishop e6, rook e1, bishop c8, rook e2 check, king h1, rook e7 defending the pawn, king g2. Let me just back up real quick and not just blow by this move. He could have just played rook e7 right away, right? But he throws in a check. It's not an empty check. It pushes the king further away from the center, which is critical in an endgame situation. Remember, the king becomes an important attacker. So that was quite a shrewd interlude there. Now king g2, king e8, pawn h4, king d8, hitting the bishop, bishop g4, rook e3. And it was here that white resigned the game. So he's attacking this pawn. So let's say he moves his pawn to the safety of b4. Well, that's going to be answered with rook e4, forking the bishop and the pawn. And after bishop f3, we grab that pawn. That hits the knight, making the knight move. Let's say knight b6. We're going to play bishop d4 and collect up some pawns. Or rook b5 is just as good. If he plays bishop e2 to give his knight somewhere to go, we go ahead and collect the pawn. Knight c4, king e7. We can play king f3 to centralize our king. Rook b3 check. King f4. How about bishop here? That's going to win a pawn. Yeah, so if he comes after our weak H-man, we can go ahead and grab this. Come here. He can have the H-man. We're grabbing his H-man with check. He can grab our G-man. We're going to aim at the A-man here. And he's got to do something. We'll go ahead and give check with our rook. Hit the bishop. If he hits our rook, rook d. F Let's go rook d. F Let's hit the bishop. And then we can go ahead and take this. Because if he takes, we fork his king and his knight. And of course, a rook and three pawns against a bishop. I think now anybody could win from here. And there you go, the 1956 U.S. Open. The winner of which was Arthur Bisguire. But Bobby Fischer with no losses at all.